On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we talk about Every Sound Has a Color in the Valley of Night by Night Versus. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. We're two professional broadcasters. We like metal and we like to talk about it. Uh And on tonight's episode, we're going back to a band that we talked about uh, a little last year sometime, I think. Their album from 2018. Yeah, uh, which uh, the name escapes me at at this moment. Uh, But Uh, from the Gallery of Sleep. Yes, that's what it was called. Uh, yes, but uh, yeah, we, we talked about that a while ago, uh, and mm-hmm. this is their newest album that actually came out as a two parter, mm-hmm. which I didn't realize, uh, which also made trying to find reviews of this album basically impossible because <laughs> every review was either of part one or part two. Uh-huh. And so I just gave up and decided not to bother with finding any kind of comprehensive score uh, for this album. Wait a minute. Uh, is it, it, on streaming services, okay, it should be one. the full thing. Because I, I only listen to the, half of did this. Did the album you listened to uh, go on for an hour and five minutes? Uh, basically, yeah. Then you listen to the full thing. Okay. There were fourteen tracks. Yeah, you you okay. listen to the full thing. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I and I didn't realize that because the version that I had come across on Spotify and had been listening to on Spotify was just one thing. It didn't say. You know, this album part one or this album part two or right. this album part one and two. It just was mm-hmm. this album. Uh, so I had no idea that they had released it as a as a two parter, mm-hmm. uh, which I guess kind of makes sense because it's quite long. Mm-hmm. But uh, in, in any case, we'll, we'll talk more about uh, uh, Night Versus a, a bit later on. First, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I, uh, I, I to to revisit this. I bought a new car. Yes. Uh, brand new car. I have uh, 1,600 miles on it, uh-huh. and it's probably going to get demolished tonight. <laughs> I mean, as we were looking at yeah. earlier, it pr- will y- It'll be probably fine. be fine. There is a big thunderstorm that's supposed to be coming through the area, and there was talk about softball-sized hail yeah. or some shit. baseball, yeah. And it, looking at the radar, it looks like we're going to get very little if anything right it'll be it'll be fine like it it, every all indications seem to be that bismarck is getting absolutely hammered Mm -hmm. but we seemingly are are getting fuck all i've been hammered in bismarck several times hey Hey. wake up in a front yard i don't know if i've ever been hammered in bismarck i've been drunk in bismarck i don't know if i've i don't know if i would say i've been hammered in bismarck Uh uh i got there was one time I went drinking with my with my sister and her her husband at the time before we went on a, a Vegas trip because uh-huh. we were leaving from Bismarck. And so I, I came down to uh, stay with them before we left the next day. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say I got hammered. We went to a barcade <laughs> and that was that was fun. I went to a party once in, in the Bismarck area uh, where I went outside and they were playing this game. Where they had, like, steel tip darts. Lawn darts. No. They weren't playing... They they weren't playing lawn darts. No, this was way stupider. What they were doing was, is they they all had a can of beer between their feet. And they were all sitting in lawn chairs. Mm -hmm. And they were taking turns throwing actual, like, the kind of darts you throw at a dartboard. Yeah. Steel tipped and trying to hit each other's beer. With with the dart. Right. And, and if they did, then you if somebody hit your beer, you had to pull out the dart and shotgun the beer. Right. Yeah. And they're all sitting, you know, many feet apart and they had bare legs on either side uh-huh. of those beer cans. Of course. And I sat and I thought, this is a terrible idea. Yeah. You guys are going to get injured. And this was the kicker of the story. I said, I mean, do we have like some sort of a medical professional around just in case one of you drunks? Hits another guy in the leg with a dart. And they're uh-huh. like, oh, we're nurses. We're all nurses. <laughs> like, okay, well, I'm going inside. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, just old-fashioned lawn darts mm-hmm. on its own. Right. Uh, like the old ones. The jarts, yeah. Uh, th- those were already uh, dangerous enough. Right. Uh, as as I have heard, any, I've not actually played. No lawn darts myself, but I know that like the older versions of the games, those were properly like heavy things you could mm. hurt somebody with. Right. They had a sharp a tip. Uh, and I mean, you know, like bar darts mm-hmm. or barts, uh, <laughs> as they call them. 
do in they the, in the business? <laughs> I'm sure someone does. Bart's uh, bar darts. Yeah. Uh, darts that you might use at a darts game in a bar. Right. Uh, uh, like whenever I think of someone getting hurt by one of those, all I can think of is, is the, the scene from Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. <laughs> where someone gets yeah. uh, it's. It is Sean, isn't it? Yeah, that gets Sean hit the in the dead, head yeah. with a dart and pulls it out. There's like brain juice that that comes out. Well, the he uh, doesn't. But it's one of the zombies that do, isn't it? I thought Sean. I thought he. Some a living person gets hit with the darts, and that's it's funny because it's it was like obvious that was going to happen. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they were going to be useless being used on the zombies anyway. You know, I haven't seen that movie in a very long time. And I try. I tried to show that to my youngest child, uh-huh. and I, I forgot how thick the uh, Londoner accents are. Yeah, in the in that movie, and he's watching it like that. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Shame. I mean, that's a different that's a different Sean Pegg movie, but Sean Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. Yeah. You know, the, who who cares? All British people are the same. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sean, Simon, yeah, they're all equally. Uh, <laughs> John, Sean, si- you know, British names. They all, they're all the same. <laughs> I don't know why this is a, a weird hill. I have it's decided a very to, strange... impa- to impale myself upon <laughs> with a jerk. My my strange hatred of British people, <laughs> not even specifically English people uh, or Scottish people. Uh-huh. The whole island can go fuck itself. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, last night I went to see a, a play that my teenager was the stage manager for. Uh huh. And so he's like, "Hey, you need to come and." And watch the play at some point. So my ex-wife bought me and our youngest child a ticket to go to this play. And it was The 39 Steps, which uh, a, a movie that was made by um, Hitchcock. It was a Hitchcock yeah. film. This is, the, is this the one that had uh, eight, like 150 characters played by four people? Yep. How'd that go? It actually went surprisingly well. It went, And now I found this out today that... One of those actors uh, only joined the cast a week ago. What the fuck? Because somebody got injured. And so. Je- Jesus. And it, w- it was. Fa- I laughed through the entire thing. I thought it was hilarious and well done, well executed. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's why understudies are a thing. Yeah. Of like, like, oh, you know, this person uh, uh, got sick. Somebody needs to be able to do it. So. Yeah. And then the. the, the I, um, the, the staging, the I the blocking, the blocking. Thank you. This was looking for the blocking was intense. The, there was just so much of it done by four people. Yeah. Being able to choreograph all of the, right. you know, character changes and whatnot. I remember when we talked to the uh, the uh, I can't remember what Chad's position. We is, talked to the Chad. We talked to the Chad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's he's just in charge of of summer theater. He's the creative director. Yeah. For the for the whole summer theater program. And yeah. we, we talked to him at work uh, a few weeks ago and, you know, asked him, like, how, you know, how is that going? And he's like, well, you know, some of the changes between characters are pretty, uh, uh, you know, not super in depth, like right. You know, there's not a costume change for each character. People might not even leave the stage right, when yeah. they switch characters. There, like, <laughs> there's this one scene where it's it's a, it's a conversation between four different characters played by two different actors, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it is fantastic the way they did it. Yeah, I mean, I I think about that, and then I think about like stuff that that I saw. And stuff that I did when I was in speech in high school. Uh-huh. And if you're doing like, you know, uh, uh, speech is one of those weird things to talk about because I feel like what it is called really depends on where you went to high school and, and where you grew up. Uh-huh. Because in, in North Dakota, uh, what we call speech mm-hmm. uh, might be defined differently. So it's. I, I have a hard time talking about it in a in a broader sense, in a broadcasting sense of like if people who didn't grow up here 
hear this, are they going to know what the fuck I'm talking about? Uh But anyway, like, you know, in speech, uh, depending upon what category you want to compete in, you might get a pre-written piece. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not necessarily writing your own material. You're getting a a pre-written piece that you're going to perform. And sometimes there will be multiple characters, Mm -hmm. but you are just there by yourself standing, you know, usually in a classroom uh, uh, in front of a bunch of people. There's nowhere to go. So you have to figure out a way to transition between different characters Mm -hmm. that might be talking to each other. Right. uh, On your own. And so there was various different ways that people handled that. um, And, uh, uh, you know, doing different that's that's part of. I mean, I've always kind of been a little able to do like different character voices and stuff. But sure. I think having to do that for a, a competitive purpose really kind of honed that skill. Um, but like thinking about that and then thinking about, it, yeah, it's OK, in a longer format, that's, you know, it, how long was the how long was it? Was uh, the play? Well, about an hour and a half. Yeah. Hour and a half, almost two. No, 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 it was over two hours because it started at 8.30 and mm-hmm. we've done it at, done at 11. Yeah. So, yeah. Because our, our time limit for speech was usually like six minutes. Right. And you could pack, you know, I don't know how many characters into that six minute, mm-hmm. uh, depending upon what piece you chose. You could, you could have a fair number of characters in there. So, thinking about that stretched over you know, uh, 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 an hour and a half or something like that. That's not, it's not that undoable. Right. Uh, but, and this was a minimal set, by the way, this was, yeah. this was not, you know, it would an have to be <laughs> an elaborate set. Yeah. I mean, it, it was because there were action scenes. Yeah. So there was, was one place where our main character had to escape out a window. They just had one of the other, other actors holding a, a window frame, <laughs> a frame. <laughs> and, then, and then they climbed through the square you know, and then the cops chasing him and to climb through the same square. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. Uh, uh, one thing that, that occurred to me with um, back, back to speech yeah. uh, is I don't know why. I think I figured out why. Like, I think I figured it out at one point and I have forgotten. Mm-hmm. Um. The national, I believe it is now called the National Speech and Debate Association. Mm -hmm. Uh, But previously, it was called the National Forensics League. And I don't know. There is like a there. There are like multiple definitions for the word forensic. Mm -hmm. Like when you think of forensics, you think of like crime scene, crime scene investigation, that sort of thing Mm -hmm. there. If I remember correctly, I looked it up and there is there is genuinely a different definition for that word Mm -hmm. that was appropriate for the organization that is now called the national speech and debate association. But apparently at some point, I think maybe before my senior year of high school or right after I graduated, Mm -hmm. they must've had some sort of a referendum and decided we're tired of fucking explaining it to people. (laughs) Let's just change the goddamn name. Right. Uh, And not only was it, uh, you know, the National Forensics League making that kind of confusing uh, because the word forensics is not what people would associate with speech or debate. Also, the acronym was NFL. (laughs) Yeah, which makes it doubly confusing. Yeah. I mean, it probably has like the meeting that they they had in Canada in the 1970s with the uh, the Canadian uh, oilseed farmers group got together and said, can we call it canola? Can we please? (laughs) Can we just call it (laughs) canola? Canola. Instead of the other one. (laughs) The other thing. (laughs) Which, I mean, hey, another reason to dislike the UK. That's what they still call it over there. (laughs) If you don't know what I'm talking about, look up canola. Yeah. (laughs) And see what. Yeah. (laughs) We've said worse things on the show. We have, but uh, yeah. No. uh, 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 Yeah. uh, Anyway. In a humorous context, it's it's yeah, no, it's not uh, not something to joke about. Not humorous, right? But any anyhow, anyway, anyhow and anyway, <laughs> yeah. It it being called the NFL was always sure uh, funny to me because you've I don't want to say you've never seen a group of less athletic teenagers. <laughs> Because just genu- speech and debate, club. yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> genuinely, I, th- I th- like, especially going to the national tournaments and mm-hmm. whatnot. There, there was a lot of kids there that I could see being athletes at other points in the year. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, not everyone was a pasty, uh, willowy nerd. Like, 
there was definitely some people who were like, ah, oh, this is this is like those. There was a lot of p- kids that looked like rich kids. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know if that was mostly i mean everybody was dressed up mm-hmm. like every everybody was wearing suits and whatnot <laughs> uh so maybe that's part of the impression maybe i looked like a rich kid to someone i don't Who know knows? but uh uh i think part of the other th- thing that led to the impression of there being a fair amount of rich kids there is just because uh the like the national association it's a national thing so sure. you know the public school of washburn north dakota was not going to pay t- for us to go there right um and for the vast majority of the people there that was an individual event like mm-hmm. people did not go as teams you might have like if you were performing a duo mm-hmm. you would go with your partner if you had a debate team or like a stu- student congress is there as well if you, you would probably go together as one group for those but for the most part it was pretty individual uh as far as i ever heard we in north dakota were pretty unique in that we would all go together basically as a team sure. uh, everyone who qualified for the national tournament from north dakota which by the way we only had one qualifying meet like there are a lot of other states where mm-hmm. they had multiple qualifying meets and there were kids that would go to a whole bunch of different ones. We only had one mm-hmm. in North Dakota uh, because we just don't have enough kids uh, or enough uh, money because, again, sure. this is not being paid for by the school system mm-hmm. uh, to justify more than one. And it was treated as an out kind of like a, a, an outgrowth of the uh, high school mm-hmm. association speech and debate stuff. Uh, so you would run into most of the same people performing pretty much all the same pieces. Sure. Uh, just with a slightly different rule set. I think the time limit was maybe longer and you had to memorize it, which is not a thing for the, uh, for the, uh, state level competition for the state level competition. You actually are required to be holding your script in your hand. Oh, wow. You can have it memorized, but you're, you're required to have it in one hand and Mm you are expected to occasionally look at it even if you are even if you have it memorized i always thought that was a weird rule that is a weird rule um like i get at least bringing it with to show the judges like hey here's my script right showing you that this is a you know this is a a piece that i am performing like and you know i'm not just doing whatever (laughs) like here's what it is um but yeah that i always thought that was a that was a little strange I feel like sp- speech is like the one of the few things in my life I feel like I've really excelled at, uh-huh. at least starting in my sophomore year of, of high school. I just right. I started getting really good at it. Mm-hmm. It's one of the few things I've, I, I genuinely feel like I've been really good at in my life. And that's where you peaked. And that's where I peaked. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's not e- like that's that's not even a a a, like a wild thing to say like it it's kind of true a little bit i don't put that much thought into like like i don't care if that's the best that it's ever been i i I don't really give a shit i'm not constantly thinking about it right like it's it's actually a little odd to me i uh, how little i think about it on a day-to-day basis for something that was such a huge part of my life for so many years like Mm -hmm. i have trophies that are in my apartment that i look at every once in a while but uh i don't i I think more about the people that i knew through doing it rather than the actual doing of it Mm -hmm. uh like like there are friends that I haven't talked to in a very long time because the way that I saw them was through doing speech. Sure. Uh, and I haven't kept up with them because I if I'm not seeing people on a regular basis, I have a very hard time keeping up with people. Mm-hmm. That's just my personality type. Right. Uh, like if you or I moved away. You'd stop existing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you I, I'd forget who you were. Right. Uh, I, I don't, actually, my problem is I don't have object permanence. That's, that's, that's what it is. Uh, like whenever you're not in front of me, I forget you exist. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I, I never developed object permanence as a child. A game of peekaboo would send him to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> you know what part of the hospital you'd be in? The psych ward. No, the ICU. <laughs> uh... Ha <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> did we run out of breath uh, at yeah, exactly well, the yeah, same I think time? We did. I was. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep this going. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm, con- I'm committed to this. Okay, I might be blacking out. It might. <laughs> I might pass out if yeah. I keep going right. for too much longer. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. Some. Some Elden Ring. Uh. News. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so last night I was playing Elden Ring and I, I beat the the boss that I had been really struggling with and, and talked about a bit uh, mm-hmm. last time we recorded. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I beat that boss. Uh, there was there was an update that was released that kind of changed the power scaling a little bit for mm-hmm. some items that you pick up. And I think that helped. Um, and there was some some advice uh, that I was given that also helped uh, a ton. Um, but then after that, mm-hmm. I was playing, I was going through this dungeon and there are some really frustrating, kind of needlessly difficult enemies in there mm-hmm. that I just was not having a good time fighting. They kept on killing me and it was like, why do I keep dying to these fucking guys? Uh-huh. This is stupid. Like I was, I was getting really pissed off and you couldn't help but aggro them. Uh, you, you couldn't just run past. Yeah. Well. Okay, I could have ran past them, but I didn't know where the end point of the dungeon was yet. Oh. And for me, when I like when I'm playing FromSoft games, if I don't know my end point yet, mm-hmm. I don't tend to sprint. Like I, if I fought, you know, I'll go into a room, I'll fight everything in the room, I'll mm-hmm. figure out, okay, what's everything in this room? What's all the deal? Like, okay, you know, what's my what are the exits? Uh, then I'll go in there, I'll fight everything in the next room. And like I will I'll sprint past room by room until I've defeated everything in there at least once. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like like I I try to fight almost everything at least one time. Right. Unless it's a rune bear because they can get fucked. Um, (laughs) uh, Agreed. But not going to argue with that. uh, So I was like I I was stuck on this room where I was like, I I want to defeat. It became personal. Mm -hmm. It's like they kill me enough times where I was like, I'm going to fucking beat them and conquer this room. And Mm -hmm. then I can sprint past them. Uh, And I hadn't done that yet. Right. And the keyboard that I had had for about four years, which was a Razer Black Widow. Mm -hmm. um, Nice keyboard. Uh, but it developed a hardware issue about a year ago, maybe where yeah. something got in the volume wheel. Mm. There's a little wheel up in the type top right corner, mm. uh, where, you know, you could spin the wheel and it would adjust the volume on your computer. Pretty convenient. Well, sure. something got in there and every once in a while it would fritz the fuck out and just change the volume of its own volition to whatever the fuck it felt like. Sometimes it felt like turning it all the way up to a hundred percent and deafening me. Sometimes (laughs) it felt like turning it all the way down. Sometimes it would just fritz and go back and forth a couple of percentages Mm -hmm. on the volume scale. Uh, And this also meant that when I intentionally wanted to change the volume, it would not work correctly. I could sit there and spin it and go up, down, up, down, up, down. Like it would just jitter all the all over the place Mm -hmm. and you couldn't reliably use it to change the volume. So that had been busted for a while. And just as I was dying to some of these stupid fucking skeletons, Mm -hmm. I was getting kit like (laughs) the the microsecond in which I got killed and hit like the peak amount of frustration. Mm -hmm. uh, It started doing that. And I slammed my fist down onto the volume wheel Mm -hmm. uh, and it busted the support underneath that side of the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's the uh, sort of um, seesaw effect also caused the left shift key Uh to pop up out of its, uh, you know, mooring (laughs) with the actual switch that was fixable. The, at the little support on the bottom was not fixable. That was just broken. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I sat there for a couple minutes, embarrassed that I am apparently a, a caveman mm-hmm. who destroys technology when it displeases him. Uh, like, like I can't think of the last time, if ever, that I genuinely broke a, a piece of technology because it made me angry. Right. Like I, I can't think of the last time that happened for me it was a playstation 2 controller okay yeah i i I don't know if i have ever broken a control i can't say i've never thrown a controller Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, see, these were not remote controllers. Yeah, those were <laughs> those were wired in. Yeah. Um, but uh, but as as far as I'm aware, I've I don't think I've ever broken a a controller or anything like that. I've had out of out of anger and frustration with a video game. But and by so, the by the way, I think you just now changed the lyrics to a, a Halloween song for me for okay forever. Why now? Now this October, it's going to be stupid fucking skeletons. <laughs> stupid fucking. Uh, but yeah, I. <laughs> So I, I, I broke that and like the keyboard was definitely still usable. Right. Um, but like that volume wheel thing is I, I don't know how to fix it. Like the like there are so many other things on the keyboard. Like you can pop off all of the keycaps, mm-hmm. um, but that volume wheel is not disassemblable. Uh, well, anything's disassemblable. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you could put it back together, though, and right. have it work unless you are, you know, uh, uh, a small parts ele- uh, electronics person. Right. Uh, I, I, d- I certainly don't know. The only thing I could find online recommended to try and fix that was take some air duster, put the nozzle up to because there's a little gap between sure. a button in the middle of the wheel that mm-hmm. you use to mute and unmute. Sure. Uh, there's a little gap between the edges of that button and the outside of the wheel. And that's how shit gets in there. Um, Poor design. And uh, like, it's basically like a funnel on the uh, (laughs) it's stupid, but uh, like, oh, just point the nozzle of an air duster out there and, you know, blow it, you know, blow some air into there and it might fix it. You tried that. It didn't. Yeah, Yeah. it it, it did. Fuck all. Uh, So a very minor issue mm-hmm. to throw away what was at the time a relatively expensive keyboard mm-hmm. but uh it's also extremely annoying and as far as i know there's no uh software there there's there's no bit of software or any bit of hardware uh fuckery that can be done <laughs> <laughs> the word the word wasn't coming to me so right. it just said fuckery uh like i don't know how to disable that Mm-hmm. bit on that keyboard and i had it i'd had it for like four years anyway so it's like fuck it you know i've got my money's worth out of this keyboard whatever uh and so i i went to best buy and bought a new keyboard which is sitting over here uh at the moment it's a neat a, light show going on yeah well i mean it's fully the the old one was fully programmable too um mm-hmm. uh but this one uh is is the same it's a steel series pro um which uh, uh, is not only programmable as far as like the RGB elements on it, yeah, uh, but also has programmable actuation of the keys, yeah, because it is technically a mechanical keyboard, mm-hmm. but it does not have normal mechanical switches. They are actually magnetic sensors, mm-hmm. um, so the keycaps kind of sort of float a little bit i mean they, they kind of feel like they float it does mean that they don't really click and clack uh the way that i really like i i, I like that chris i re, i like the crisp feeling of like actually you know pressing down on the key and feeling you like break and hit feeling it break and hit the sensor and right. i like the noise but um uh this you can it allows you to change how far down you have to press the key uh, in order for it to register, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, I do love, by the way, every day when I hear I'm using it. Yeah. That that uh, our, our boss over at the radio station has a gamer keyboard. Yeah. Uh, well, one of one of our coworkers yeah. apparently had that and just gave it to gave it to him. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> It'll be in there writing up a script or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I th- like I've heard him talk about it, and it, he's kind of like me. He just likes the noise. He likes the feeling. Yeah. Uh, and I totally understand that. Um, like uh, they are very satisfying to use. Like like loud, clicky, clacky mechanical keyboards. Just they f- just feel good. Mm-hmm. And if you're by yourself using them, the noise is not like. Because you know you're making the noise, it doesn't. You know it's not as annoying. It it can definitely be annoying if you are having to overhear someone else using a mechanical keyboard. Yeah, I, I get that can be annoying, but um, if you're just on your own, there I I consider them to be very satisfying to use. I it's a very nice tactile experience. We've talked about this before, where we yeah. have. Uh, I like things having physical buttons on them. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, it's it's just nice to be able to actually feel what you're doing Mm -hmm. and not have to, like, look at it Uh, like the flatter a keyboard is, Mm -hmm. the more I hate using it. 
I I actually was a was a, a holdout on the cell phone yeah. change to smartphones because I like my slide out keyboard yeah. with the physical buttons on it. I feel like I could type so much faster. Right. So, like so, so much faster on like a, a no matter how small the actual physical buttons were. Yeah. Like I, I briefly had a phone that had a slide out full keyboard on it mm-hmm. like that. I think that was my second phone that I had, maybe. Yes. Um, briefly. Same here. Uh, and uh, no, it was like, my third. Okay. I took my second one swimming almost three days. after I got it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, but like like second phone that I had in in junior high or whenever that was mm-hmm. uh, had like a, a slide out full keyboard and it was it was very satisfying to use mm-hmm. uh, and I felt like I could type way faster on it than than I can on a touch screen. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, like it's it, and know. more accurately. Yeah, more accurately. I uh, is I mean, that's for me, that's part of speed is is accuracy. Right. Uh, you know, not having to constantly go back and fix a typo because you fat fingered, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, like, like I, I need to replace my phone anyway. And mm-hmm. it's you do. Yeah. It, that might do. be an element of why the touch screen is so frustrating to use these days. But like, I don't have large, large hands or large mm-hmm. fingers. Mm-hmm. I have remarkably small hands for a man my size. Uh, and yet I still constantly press the wrong fucking key on my touch screen. Uh, and that bugs the shit out of me. Happens to me all the time too. Yeah. I don't like it. You know, and I constantly have to yell at the autocorrect too. I mean, the autocorrect will correct some shit that has no business correcting. Yeah. And then, and then I'll come to a word that's, you know, obviously, you know, it's a seven letter word and it's, you know, like automatically or whatever and it'll like and i'll spell it like three letters that are wrong and be like i don't know what you're trying to type i hate it i hate it when you have when you're typing something and you will be typing a word and it will be one letter off Mm -hmm. and it's got nothing for you like the like the (laughs) you know the, the three options that come up it's like we have no idea what that word is and we can't give you any options for fixing it fast without you having to go in and use the fucking touch screen that caused you to misspell it in the first place and fiddle with it and try and get the cursor in the right spot so you can mm. sub, uh, I was about to say subtract so you can backspace <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually showed my uh, my boy the other day I felt like a smart dad moment because uh, he was watching me type something and I, that I found an error in it and mm. then I, and I pressed down on the space bar yeah. so you can move the cursor anywhere you know about that, right? Is that is is that a universal thing or is that an Apple That's thing? It's pretty universal, I think. Or maybe it is Apple. When you're typing something and you want to go somewhere else, pressing uh, down on the space bar. I'm about to, I'm about to find out. Uh, he's he's looking at his phone there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, type a message. Just type a bunch of letters mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. into our D and D chat. Okay. Oh, shit. You didn't know that. I had no idea. Yeah. You can use the space. If you press, hold the space bar down, you can just, you can I, just cursor the. That's fucking cool. I had no idea that was a thing. Yeah. That may, that might actually make my life quite a bit easier. Yay. In some, in some small ways. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, you know, I'll take it. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, you got you. You've got you. You got two. Sweet. And who knows? Maybe a whole bunch of listeners out there will have realized the same thing. Mm-hmm. So you have now made a bunch of people's lives marginally better. Well, I, anything I can do to counterdict that, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> now say something awful <laughs> and offend a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> Restore the balance of the universe. I could play that Ramstein song from earlier. <laughs> oh, no. How dare you? Why'd you even bring it up? I'm not even going to describe what it is. Yeah. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to inflict that evil upon anyone in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, it's like an info hazard. It's, it's like an eldritch uh thing like it's like something from a lovecraft book where you know the protagonist opens some forbidden tome 
and they read a few words and they're like, I should not be seeing this. And they put it away. But then the, the words just stay in their mind. And they're like, oh, I have to open the book again. <laughs> it's like that sort of thing. Right. Uh, if I said what it is, you'd understand, listener. Uh-huh. You'd get it. Why You'd get understand why I'm saying it. But I can't say it because I've taken a moral stand. <laughs> on this right i will not back down just like my hatred of people from britain <laughs> you know what we say to those people from britain <laughs> fuck off mate <laughs> i spit on you uh if anybody out there is from the uk and is listening yeah no, I, no we I, don't say I, it. I am joking we he's kidding entirely uh yeah <laughs> He's just saying a thing to be. I've got friends from the UK. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I've got British friends. Yeah, that type of argument is always a good idea. <laughs> it's always a great idea. Yeah. Always, it always works. Um, uh, yeah, I do know, uh, or like I have, yeah, in the past had people I would describe as friends from the uk but mm-hmm. i have not talked to them in many years because well, sure. they were all people i knew playing uh, from playing minecraft really uh, yeah like when i when i was in high school there was like a, a multiplayer server that i joined and uh eventually like there was a really big uh like voice uh, uh channel server uh that i popped into and i met a whole bunch of people and hung out with them fairly regularly. I sometimes uh, wonder, uh, back in, this has been back in the 1990s, um, but, but would it have been before or after you were born? I don't, I know. don't know. I don't know. It's all a blur. <laughs> so I, anyway, I had a, a friend that I only knew through, uh, what was the name of that, that, uh, chat service? Uh, uh, Oh, uh, it was, <laughs> That was what the that hell sounded was, like a Furby noise. <laughs> it did. That's exactly what it sounded like. Oh, what is the name of that? Anyway, I, fucking know. Uh, I she was this woman I talked to every day. She was a middle aged mother of four who was a house painter in Christchurch <laughs> in New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> and we'd chat back and forth all the time. It was like it like a chat room. I like mean, a, I mean, it was, it was like it was like a, a messenger program. It was like before there was a Facebook like, messenger. Is there something called AIM? That was uh, like a messaging service? Yeah, th- it, it wasn't, wasn't it, that. No, okay. it was, uh, oh, I'll think of it. Was it MSN Messenger? It was not. Yeah, I d- I've, I've got no idea. Alta Vista chat rooms. It, it was not. <laughs> um. Anyway, do you want to talk about uh, Night Versus? Yeah. That was great. Uh, everyone's, there, fa- yeah. everyone's favorite segue anyway. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, Night Versus is an American instrumental band Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, calling them. I referred to them last week as post metal. I don't know if that's entirely accurate. It's somewhat accurate. In in the sense that, I mean, post metal is a very nebulous genre anyway. Mm -hmm. Same as post rock, which is what they're generally described as being more of a post rock band. They've also been described as like instrumental metal core and Mm -hmm. All kinds of different suffice to say that they have they're an instrumental band that has plenty of spacier, more atmospheric moments. Yeah. Mixed in with some extremely heavy uh, moments and some remarkable musicianship and technique. Yeah. I I saw one review. uh, I, I. do not recall. I think it was from uh, the website. Everything is sound. I want to, I want to give mm-hmm. a little bit of, or everything is noise. I want to give a little bit of credit, uh, uh, which they, they referred to like s- instrumental bands like this kind of existing on a sliding scale mm-hmm. uh, from animals as leaders on one end to like Russian circles on the other end mm-hmm. or animals as leaders is the type of band that exists purely to showcase the insane technical ability that the band members have. Mm-hmm. 
um, and can maybe sometimes grow a little bit stale because that's most of what they have to offer is just look at how insane our songwriting can be right. and how you know instrumental crazy this is yeah and then russian circles is is much more like still very good uh performers that that are you know have a great amount of technical ability but lean much leans much more heavily on the atmosphere of the music that they're making and sort of incorporating all the instruments together into into one sort of cohesive sound and these guys uh the the article pointed out that these guys land very comfortably in the middle and manage to incorporate kind of the best of both worlds mm-hmm. uh, in, in a way that I definitely would agree with. Uh, there's they, they have so much atmosphere and character. I don't even know how I would describe sort of the, the vibe of their music. It feels uh, like it's very textural. Yeah, it, it reminds me almost of like a. um like it like an art house film but like like <laughs> like a very slick and stylish art house film uh, an art house film that was made in a big studio yeah, yeah like like a a like an extremely competent director mm-hmm. that has a lot of really good ideas got a very big budget uh you know like like uh like a robert eggers type sure uh i still haven't seen the northmen by the way but really uh uh but like you know like that kind of director who has such a distinct vision Mm. getting a a big budget to do whatever they want with it Mm -hmm. and that's kind of that the i i yeah i think you hit the nail on the head that's kind of how night versus feels they have like their production is so clean, but mm-hmm. it doesn't lose it doesn't lose its soul. It's in not how sterile. It's I, part of that, I yeah. think, is just because there's so many layers to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's a lot going on. And one thing that I love hearing is when bands have really heavy riffs. Yeah. But the low end doesn't lose any fidelity mm-hmm. like. Uh, I guess it's kind of, you know, spoilers and in, in jumping ahead towards my, my favorite track. Uh, but the the final track, the closer. Yes. Has two moments. Phoenix five. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Phoenix five invocation. Yeah. Um, has two moments towards the back half of the song. That is some of the heaviest music I've ever fucking heard. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and it is so rumbly but you can hear every you can hear all the little details of like the all all of the bits of the instruments that are playing and the the growling of the of the bass and the the low strings on the guitar mm-hmm. uh it's it's crazy how, like the the fidelity that they get out of that i like th- those two moments i had i had that stank face on that that face you make that that that, yeah that exaggerated frown where you scrunch your whole face when you hear something that's so heavy it's like ooh yeah (laughs) you you almost went macho man ooh yeah (laughs) like you hear something that's just so fucking nasty Mm -hmm. uh and and it's yeah though there's a couple moments on that track that are just oh uh, just disgustingly heavy Mm -hmm. um and I, I, I really uh, I, I really loved that. Uh, there's also uh, a fair few songs on here that feature uh, collaborations yeah, with with other artists, uh, artists sometimes instrumentally, mm-hmm. a few times adding vocals because yep. uh, they're they're normally an instrumental band. None of them are singers, but they brought in some some friends of mm-hmm. theirs uh, to do a little bit of singing. That feller from Incubus. Uh, which one was that? That'd be, uh, I didn't recognize I didn't recognize any of the names. Not that I'm a, a big Incubus fan that I would that I would know uh, his name. Is that Justin Chancellor? No. Uh, what about Brandon Boyd? Brandon Boyd. Yep. OK. Uh, uh, the song Slow Dose features a singer called Anthony Green, mm-hmm. who if I if there was not a masculine name there, mm-hmm. I don't know you if I would have. I, I don't know yeah. if I would have known that was a male vocalist or I, I'm I'm assuming uh uh but uh mm-hmm. very you know a great singing high voice fall, but, but uh, falsetto in there, yeah, yeah very uh uh like re- remarkably high reminds me of uh uh there's a post-hardcore band 
that was popular when I was a teenager. Um, the name escapes me, but the name <laughs> of the singer, for whatever reason, hasn't escaped me. Their name is Kellen Quinn, uh, and they were kind of known as the uh, uh, Sleeping with Sirens, I think, was the name of the band. Gotcha. Um, uh, but they were they were kind of the uh, known as the band that like if you listen to them you would introduce them to someone and be like hey you hear that singer that's a guy and everyone would go whoa crazy dude (laughs) this has turned into a 90s capri sun commercial (laughs) whoa dude six skate tricks bro (laughs) i'm getting pretty thirsty let's drink this capri sun and turn into weird liquid metal that's gonna spin remember those commercials yeah those were really weird what the fuck why did why did they turn into the t1000 Anyway, have you seen this boy? <laughs> I think there's a adult swim commercial that turns that into like a horror uh, <laughs> concept, if I remember correctly. But uh, uh, yeah, there's uh, uh, this out. Yeah, there's just a lot. Mm-hmm. This album, it's pretty long. It's an hour and five minutes. It is. Which is 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 long as albums go. It's almost 65 minutes. Almost 65 minutes. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if. I wouldn't say it outstayed its welcome. No, it did not. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think I had some concern about that, about the runtime maybe in. being a bit long. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, I, I can't say that I really noticed it. I think it, it was on my mind. I don't think I wouldn't. I don't think I would have been bothered about it if it mm-hmm. hadn't been on my mind because I ha- I'd listened to probably about half of the album mm-hmm. before tonight. Uh, part one. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they, they released it in two parts. Um, but, uh, uh, I'd listened to probably like half the album before tonight. Mm-hmm. And then I like listened to the whole album after I got home from work, but I, you know, I'd done some other stuff and I was like, Oh shit, it's like five 30. I gotta get listening to that. So I was like, mm-hmm. it's an hour and five minutes. Shit. Uh, so that was, was a little bit on my mind. Um, but, uh, uh, no, I, I don't think it outstayed. It's welcome. There's, there's, uh, yeah, there's shit. There's a lot to to like, a lot to dig into. I think does uh, this album slap? It does slap, absolutely. And, and here's one thing: it kind of reminded me. Here's what it made me think of. Uh, there was this band I listened to a lot in the '90s. Mm-hmm. They were called the Osric Tentacles. The Osric Tentacles. They were from Oxford, England. Okay. Uh, oh, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck those guys. There's a theme. So uh, yeah, and. <laughs> And, and, and uh, a lot of the, the things that they were instrumental, but uh, a lot of the stuff on here reminded me of what maybe they might have made had they not smoked all that weed. <laughs> if they had done Adderall instead. Yeah, if they had done Adderall and instead of smoking so much weed, <laughs> this is, might be what they saw. And plus, also, that was 30 years ago. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, as I was looking at their list of uh, influences that they have referenced as like like you know uh, bands that they they feel have influenced their sound mm-hmm. some make a lot of sense some are kind of bizarre uh but they're kind of bizarre but they also make sense cuz this this music is ultimately a little weird it is uh uh so they have referenced tool sure that i one, can see that yeah you can see that absolutely isis okay uh, which is an unfortunately named band, but mm-hmm. a fantastic post metal band mm-hmm. uh, that is unfortunately now defunct. <laughs> yeah, primarily because of their name. Yeah, uh, Fiona Apple, which is not a band I'm familiar with. You've never heard of Fiona Apple? I've not. Oh, I'm not have to consciously. Play, at least I'm gonna have to play you some Fiona. I actually really like her. Even she made an album a couple of years ago that was okay. bizarre but really good. Uh, a band called At the Drive In. I don't know what the band is, but I, I, you know, if familiar. I see the words at the drive in, I'm going to sing it uh-huh. uh, like it's talk dirty to me. <laughs> um, yeah. Opeth. No, no, who's that? Is that who's who are those guys? I don't know who that is. Uh, Bjork. OK, uh, I can see that. Yeah. Deftones. Yeah, I can see that. The- DJ Shadow. Don't know who that is. Uh, you know, in a sense, I can because the the, the, the technical like the, the studio work that they do, I can see. So you're familiar with DJ Shadow? Some of DJ Shadow stuff, okay. yeah. Uh, a little band called Nirvana, whoever those guys are. So they, are they from uh, like the, the 
Far, far East or are they? Probably. Uh, Rage Against the Machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have cited various other uh, like trip hop artists uh, and the film Beyond the Black Rainbow, which is not a film I have seen. I have not seen. Uh, and I, not I seen don't that. know anything about it. It's a name that sounds familiar, but mm. I, I am not familiar with the actual music of it. Uh, the members of the band have performed with a wide variety of other uh bands not necessarily as permanent members but uh they're kind of they they are pretty well connected uh amongst various other bands they performed with Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of uh uh, like names that are that coming up with like other projects got billy reimer from the dillinger escape plan uh alex bend from trivium uh, 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 Lionel Robinson from a band called Let Live. I see the Chariots being sure. recognized. Travis Barker's coming up there at mm-hmm. some point. Like from the Aquabats. Uh, <laughs> yes, Travis Barker from the Aquabats. Yeah. Uh, in Flames is mentioned on there. Mm-hmm. It's like love me some In Flames. Uh, uh, yeah, they're they're pretty well connected. It seems like uh, mm-hmm. the members of the band, by the way, are Nick DePiro on guitar, mm-hmm. uh, Riley Herrera on bass, and Arik uh, in uh, Inarota. I think uh, is if I can read my own damn handwriting. <laughs> Maybe I can just look at the Wikipedia. It, oh, Improta. That's a P uh, <laughs> in my handwriting. Arik Improta uh, mm-hmm. playing drums for them. Sure. Uh, they had a vocalist. Uh, and then when he left. Douglas Robinson. Du- Douglas Robinson. And uh, when he left, they're like, you know, we don't need a vocalist. Let's just, yeah, let's, let's just do this. Let's just, they're, I mean, they're, that's happened before. Mm-hmm. Uh, the band uh, uh, We Lost the Sea mm-hmm. comes to mind, although the reason why they've been without a vocalist he is because he, he passed away. Right. Uh, but, um, uh, like, yeah, it's, it's not the first time where a band has been, you know, like really instrumentally intricate. He parted ways with a vocalist one way or another and then gone, let's just stay an instrumental band. Why mm-hmm. not? Uh, and it's I think it's really worked out for them. Yeah. Um, so what's what's your favorite song? I've, I've basically mentioned mine already. But uh, what's what's your favorite track? <laughs> I mean, I do love Phoenix Five. Yeah, uh, that is it's a great song. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's odd that that song that they do with uh, with Brandon Boyd, the uh, glitching prisms. It's actually a really good I song. I remember liking that. I remember liking uh, that. But the one that actually I, I went back to and listened to several times because it's the one that <laughs> most reminded me of the Osric Tentacles. OK, because just the, the, the type of sampling in it uh, is Crystal X. Yeah, Crystal X was was yeah. I I remember liking that. I don't remember the details about it though. It's, it's what, not what really, is it? it's not a particularly heavy song. Okay, but there's a lot of really great. The, by the way, the bass guitar work. Oh in this God, is fucking over the moon. The the bass is is. Oh yeah, no, yeah. You, you, you over the moon. I think is the right. Yeah, <laughs> the the, right, the bass work is insane. Um, to the point where there are some times where like the the technicality and the like the intricacy of the bass work outshines the guitar. Yeah. Um, although one thing that I that I do want to mention that I, occurred to me at several points listening to it is I feel like they uh, uh, really got a lot of use out of the uh, the delay pedal for yeah. the guitar. Yes, they did. In a way that is not like like I, I remember watching a Rob Scallon video at one point mm-hmm. and he talks a little bit about how like he has a song called rain mm-hmm. and he's like, people are always like, wow, that song sounds so complicated. And he's like, it's not complicated. It's just a delay pedal. It's right. actually a very simple song that I put on a delay pedal and mm-hmm. makes it sound way more like a delay pedal can make you sound like a much better guitarist than you are. Right. That's not to say that the guitarist that uh, Nick DePiro is in any way a bad guitarist no. or not an insanely good guitarist, mm-hmm. but like delay pedals when used correctly can make a fantastic to ne- uh, technique sound fucking insane. Right. Um, or or if you're uh, uh, a, a really sort of mediocre guitar player from Ireland, uh, it can make people believe that you're a good guitar player. Are you talking about Sting? The Edge. Uh, the Edge. Sting? Sting? No. The Edge. Yeah. I knew it was just a name. Somebody has. <laughs> The Edge from U2. If you're really listening to his guitar playing, yeah. there's, there, there's a lot of pedals going there's on. There's a lot of pedals for sure. Yeah. I mean, he's isn't isn't The Edge self-taught for guitar? Didn't I read that somewhere that he's like entirely self-taught he and might, they can't read sheet music, he, which is not super uncommon for guitarists. It's not. Um uncommon. but uh yeah. uh uh 
I wonder if I wonder if he would refute that he's not a particularly talented guitarist. I, I think he said that in, in, in interviews. He's like, you know, was, I don't know how we made it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Like, I kind of suck. I just, <laughs> you know, I just do some kind of normal stuff and gussy it up and make it sound pretty, mm -hmm. uh, which he does. Like, sure. Uh, you know, I, I I do not uh, mind some some U two or at least at least older U two, mm -hmm. which. I've, does anyone really love like you two from the last 20 years you, or 20, 30, the last yeah, 30 years? Like, <laughs> they got weird. Yeah. Like, like, does any, <laughs> is anyone a massive fan of their work from the last, from the last 30 years? I, uh, unless you're the world's number one U2 fan, like, right. Uh, uh, you know, I like they're you know stuff from the '80s. I absolutely will. I I I like almost every one of their songs that we have at work. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I find them pleasant to listen to. They're they're just nice. Uh, uh to the point where there was a a, a non metal month at one point that I I had planned to have us listen to Joshua Tree. Really, at some point, but then uh, something else shiny popped up, and I, I changed to a different album. I would tell I I I'm totally listen to it. Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, anyhow, uh, getting back to tonight versus, mm -hmm. I think that the time has come to bestow a medal upon it, like Maz Kanata to Chewbacca. What do you think? I. <sighs> I'm, I'm difficult in this. I'm, I'm with say, you. I'm, I'm going to say you. high silver. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't write it down because I, I, I wanted to, like, talk it out with you and, and see if that made things mm -hmm. more clear it's, for me. It's it's great, but it's very niche. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, I think I agree with you on a, on a high. It's borderline for me. Yeah. It's, it's borderline gold, but I, I'm going to call it a high silver for now. Mm hmm. Because, like you said, it's niche. It's quite long, mm -hmm. and, and I'm I'm usually the kind of person where I like to listen to this sort of thing as a whole album. Mm -hmm. And as great as the musicianship is, fantastic, and, and as gnarly as some moments are, and as heavy as they are, mm -hmm. when it comes to like really long experiences like this, I tend to rely on like big emotional hooks mm -hmm. to to draw me back to something like. Like uh, uh, departure songs by We Lost the Sea, right? To bring them back into the conversation, like, that's not a short album. It's not, but I will go back and listen to that song because it has some gigantic emotional hooks in there. Yeah, that I, you know, it, it brings back some some feelings that I really want to re-experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like this, Same. that's not to say there's nothing like that. There's not that not that there's nothing evocative on this album but it's mostly the the songwriting and the performance and the in the just the the wall of sound mm -hmm. um and all of the bits and pieces of it that you can really pick apart that mm -hmm. that draws it so it's not like a I probably won't go back and listen to this over and over again and and from the gallery of sleep was that way for me too I think we I may have given that a gold I don't know if you did I don't know, but it's one remember. that I that since we talked about it, I, I realized that I've, bar I've barely gone back to in the mm. time since. Uh, so maybe it wasn't deserving of the gold <laughs> that I gave it. If I did give it a gold, which I think I did, but I don't know. I, th I think another thing uh, with we lost the sea there, by the way, is is also that all the tracks on that album are are about a tragic death. Yeah, so they're about, <laughs> even uh, though there's no lyrics. Yeah. You know what they're about. Yeah, there, there's a story there, and yeah. there's it, there's something that piques the imagination. There's mm -hmm. a visualization that can happen. There's a movie that plays in your head mm -hmm. as you're listening to that album, if you know what it's about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so that that can really help uh, make a longer experience have a lot more, you know, replayability. Right. Um, but uh, uh, this is by no means bad it's you know like high silver borderline gold so you should absolutely uh spend some time listen to this uh, yes I, I think it's i think it will be worth your time however many times you end up listening to it if you are more drawn back to this than we were then that's that's great for you <laughs> uh, uh but yeah very high silver i think is mm -hmm. is is where i'm at so next week what do you want to talk about you know what i hadn't thought about it 
I actually. Oh wait, it won't. It. it probably won't be next week because by next Thursday I will be in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, well, next week, yeah, next, next Thursday is next gonna be time. July Fourth anyway. Yeah, I'll be at a mm-hmm. baseball game next time. Next time on the Bronze Medals Podcast. What are we talking about? I hadn't thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm pulling a kale. Hey. Oh, by the way, ICQ. What's th- what is that? That's the uh, messenger service. From the 90s. <laughs> I had no idea what your I see. Go. I've never even heard of that. I see Q. It was very it was a more primitive time. It was from from 1996. Oh wow. Yeah. I mean, one of the few good things that happened in 1996. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Mostly just tragedies happened. Yeah. <laughs> Well, on that note, uh, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and uh, yeah. uh, follow our pages on on social media? We're on Facebook. We're also on the website, formerly known as Twitter. Uh-huh. Uh, you can also go ahead and use whatever service you're using to listen to us right now. Uh, follow us mm-hmm. or subscribe to our feed or whatever they call it. Yeah, uh, whatever the kids are saying. Whatever, there. whatever the kids are doing. Maybe you scrabble it. I don't know. Do you ever do you ever use it? Scrabble? There's a site called Last FM. I've heard of that. Yeah. That apparently they refer to individual listens as scrabbles. That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, scrabble us on last.fm. <laughs> um, <laughs> and thank you uh, uh, very much for listening to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Cam OJ. Congratulations. Congratulations.